Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host. And on today's how-to video, we're going to discuss general coupling and also take a closer look at elastomeric coupling. And helping us out is Dave Felt. He is with Baldor Dodge ABB. Dave, welcome back Hi, to Tom. the program. Thanks, great to be here. Good to see you. Man, we have got a lot of stuff on the table right here. What are we going to yeah, be talking about? Well, what about? we have in front of us are two common styles of couplings. We have metallic mm -hmm. couplings and elastomeric style couplings. Although there are a number of different coupling styles available today, these main styles cover a significant majority of the industrial applications. Okay, I see a lot of options to consider, so where do you want to begin? You're right, Tom. Although there are a lot of different styles to consider, we can easily start to narrow down our options. All right, how do you want to do that? No matter what the application, all couplings are sized and selected similarly. First, let's take a look at the primary functions of a coupling. The first primary function of a coupling is to connect the shafts either the same or different shaft sizes. But of course, you have to know the shaft sizes, right? You're correct, Tom. The second primary function of a coupling is to transmit rotary power known as torque from the driver to the driven shaft. In order to determine the torque requirements, we'll need to know the motor horsepower, speed at the coupling, and the application service factor. And of course, this depends on our manufacturer's recommendations. All right, well, it seems like a good place to start, but you said that the information applies to all couplings. So how do we know whether to choose an elastomeric or a metallic coupling? The information that we've already gathered is used easily to guide us toward either that elastomeric style or the metallic style coupling. Okay. Typically, applications that have high torque or bore capacity requirements lend themselves better to metallic style couplings whereas elastomeric couplings are better suited for applications that require an economical and maintenance-free solution. Hmm. Offering shock load dampening and also the ability to accommodate higher amounts of misalignment is an elastomeric coupling. For the rest of this segment, let's look in more detail at elastomeric couplings. All right, sounds good, Dave. All elastomeric couplings use a flexible elastomeric element. Elastomeric couplings can be segmented into two main types, those where the elastomer is working in compression and those where the elastomer is working in shear. All right, so what's the difference between an elastomeric coupling operating in shear versus one that's operating in compression? A great example of an elastomeric coupling that operates in compression is the jaw coupling. A jaw coupling consists of a flexible spider element and two hubs with mating teeth. When the coupling is assembled, the flexible spider element is captured between the teeth and the jaw coupling hubs. As torque is transmitted, the flexible element is compressed between the teeth of the jaw hubs. Got it. Now that certainly makes sense. Now, what about couplings that would operate in shear? Well, let's take a look at one that works in shear. Here's right. the. But before we do that, we have to put on our PPE, right? Yes, sir. We always need to do that. Always wear the uh, proper PPE for whatever you're doing. All right, we're working in shear. Well, what do we well, got? Well, here the Dodge Paraflex coupling is shown. This coupling consists of two flange assemblies and the flexible element. These flange assemblies can be mounted to the shaft utilizing taper lock bushings or board to size style flanges. Okay, I got a tire thing, it kind of feels yeah, like element, tire here. This element design is what causes this style to be known as a tire style coupling. There are many advantages to the use of this coupling. Because the tire is made of natural rubber, the coupling is very effective in handling misalignment. Yeah, I can see, they get little cord in there, it feels just like a tire. Now, now what do you mean by misalignment though? Well, shafts are not always perfectly aligned. Over time, foundations settle, vibration occurs, and we often need to accommodate angular, parallel, or axial misalignment. Many times you're dealing with a combination of all three. The Paraflex can handle a combination of four degrees angular and one eighth inch of parallel misalignment. All right, what are some other advantages to this type? You may notice that the torsional softness of the element. This is instrumental in dampening vibration and absorbing shock loads to the installed equipment, offering longer life and improved reliability to the entire system. Now, what other types of elastomeric coupling works in shear? Glad you asked, Tom. Here's the Dodge D-Flex, an example of a sleeve-style coupling. The element has notched teeth that mate with the notches in the flanges. This coupling has good misalignment capability, is compact in size, and is maintenance-free. Additionally, it's very well balanced. It's balanced to Agma 9 standards, so it's ideal for use in lower horsepower pumping applications. You know, it's interesting because this is also good for pie crust and, you know, an occasional app. This would just do the edges just perfectly. You it know would, what I mean? Tom. I think you're right. All right, I'm going to save that for my cooking glass. Now, um, why is balancing important for pumping applications? The amount of imbalance of a coupling is directly related to the amount of vibration that is seen in the rest of the connected equipment in the system. Anytime that you're providing a coupling with a high level of balance, it reduces vibration which increases the life of the bearings, seals, and the other components to the pump and the motor. All right, now, since you mentioned pumps, what about applications such as 
pumping where the shafts can be further apart from each other. Um, using a spacer style coupling design accomplishes this task. I know we have one here, but how does the spacer design work, Dave? Spacer couplings have the same primary goal as standard couplings, which is to connect two shafts and transmit torque. We accommodate the longer BSE in the between shaft end dimension by using a spacer design, as seen here in this SC deflex style coupling. This is two hubs that remain on the shafts, and you've got a center section that drops out for easy access. Yeah, yeah but why, why designed into pumps, though? I don't understand. Well, in pumping applications, a spacer design allows easy access to the inboard side of the pump for maintenance purposes. For example, having to replace a pump seal. Most importantly, all of this can be accomplished and the coupling center assembly can be reinstalled without having to realign the pump or the motor. Now what about maintenance though for elastomeric couplings? That, that's got to be difficult, right? Well, that's another great thing about elastomeric couplings, Tom. They don't require any lubrication. The only maintenance would include a visual inspection of the element wear. Awesome. Well, Dave, thanks so much. We appreciate your time again. Dave Felt from Baldor Dodge ABB. And if you have any questions about anything you saw here today, don't forget to contact your nearest Motion Industries brand location. Hopefully this will help you in your practical applications. And as always, wear the proper PPE for whatever the job calls for. And also look for other how-to videos from Motion Industries with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks so much for watching today.